So first off, I'm going to go through a set of slides, and then I have a series of MATLAB in files that I'm going to go through and basically talk about programming in general. So to start off with, if you open MATLAB, this is the screen you're going to see. It, uh, it's just what opens up. And this here is your workspace. This is the area where it shows variable, variable uh, numbers, what's contained in a variable. You can type commands here, and this is your directory, which I will explain later. If you open the, the M file editor, it looks a lot like this. This is where you do most of your work because you want to be able to save the commands you type in. And we'll see what happens with that in a minute. So to start with the basics, basically we're, we're dealing with variables. And so variables can be, be anything, x, t, z, whatever you want to call them. And uh, who can tell me what an array is? Anybody? Let's get some class participation. There is at least eight people in this room. Adam? A vector. It is a vector. It is a one-dimensional array of numbers, right? We've all talked about arrays before. So it would be an example such as c equals this number of uh, numbers. And if you wanted to create, create this in MATLAB without typing all the numbers, you could do something like this, this line, which is uh, 1 colon 2 colon 7. It tells MATLAB to start at 1 and progress by 2, 2, 7. So it's a way to create arrays quickly without typing a bunch of numbers. So if you wanted to go from like 1 to 100, you wouldn't have to type out 50 numbers. Uh, and talking about the position inside the array, this is a big deal in MATLAB. You need to know which numbers you're talking about. So if you wanted to talk about C, uh, the second number in C, you would type C parentheses 2. So that would be equal to 3 in this array here. And the fourth number would be equal to 7. Simple enough. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Joel gives me a yes. We're good to go. Moving on. Uh, Two-dimensional arrays, they are obviously have one uh, two dimensions, so rows and columns. In MATLAB, it's always uh, the indices are rows, then columns, so you can remember RC cola. That's how I do it. So if you were talking about this array, you can make it using this line, 1, 2, colon, 3, 4. Colon tells it to skip a skip a row and it would come out to look like this and so if you talked about position 1 2 that would be the 2 position 2 2 would be the 4 simple enough not bad so basically if you put a semicolon after a line then the values of that line will not be printed to the command window and the parentheses is how you make comments in m files just good to know. So in file naming, they have to start with a letter. If they start with a number, you'll get an error. If I run out of time, then I'll demonstrate that, or if I don't talk long enough. No spaces. If you want to separate words, then use underscores. It should describe the, pers for the purpose of the script. Otherwise, you'll get confused and not know what it's for. I like to use the, a number at the end of the name so that you know which version you're working with. So if you were talking about a volume visualization, then you could put a 1. And as you progress through in scripts that work, you can do 1, 2, 3, 4. And the you know the last number is the latest version you've been working on. Variable naming is kind of important in your scripts. Uh, it should clearly describe the purpose of the, the variable that you're talking about. So I like to use delta underscore t when you're talking about the time step. Uh, a temperature underscore wall when you're talking about a temperature of the wall. And you only want to use alphabetical letters to describe counters or some other generic variable that doesn't mean a whole lot. And uh, right, Syntax of position, I and J are usually used as X and Y position keepers. And uh, at least that's the way I was taught. Counters, I usually start at A and go to Z. Uh, or just type out count underscore one, count underscore two. And for simple operations, 
uh, for similar operations, I like to use the same, uh, same letter, just multiple versions of it, so that it ke I keep track. If I'm talking about the x direction, then the first counter I use for x will be a, and the second counter it will be a, a. It kind of keeps everything straight in my brain. Commenting, you always want to comment your codes well. We'll have a demonstration of a bad commented code that I wrote in high school. Not in high school, in undergrad. Hmm. Getting farther along in college now. So always comment. You want to put your units, the units for the equations that you're using, and the variable purpose and loop purpose. It makes it infinitely easier to debug your code. And once you start coding for uh, work, your boss wants to see exactly what's going on, at least if you work at a place like NIST and you're manipulating somebody else's data, they want to know what's going on. Rodney yelled at me a lot when I was working at NIST last summer. General operations, uh, you can do obviously a lot of uh, MATLAB does a lot of math, because that's what it's for. What does MATLAB stand for? Anybody? I know one of you knows the answer, because I told him yesterday. Uh, it is a matrix laboratory. It is matrix laboratory. <laughs> so basically, MATLAB is a laboratory where you mess with numbers. That's all it's for, is a bunch of number messing with. So you can add, subtract, multiply, divide. If you put a period in front of a multiplier divide, then it does it number by number, as opposed to matrices matrices, multiplication, and division. Just usually you're wanting to operate on single numbers unless you're doing uh, simultaneous equation solving. Exponential, you use EXP. Scientific notation, you can use E and then a number. Pi is uh, PI, parentheses. Sine and arcsine. And operations on arrays or single numbers is determined by the period or just the variable type that you use. So help, when you get confused with MATLAB, which we do often because it's kind of complicated, uh, you can use the help index, which as Adam pointed out yesterday, is large and contains a lot of information, which is sometimes hard to find. So you can Google what you're looking for, and it'll generally give you the command, and then you can look up that command in the help window. You can also search the matlabcentral.com as a central file exchange where people will dump codes who are much better at coding than the average person, including myself. They're very good. The help GUI looks a lot like this. I like to click on the index tab, and then you can type in the commands you're looking for, and a whole, all of the commands that pertain to that show up. And then you can click on them, and the information will come here. So starting, starting in files, I always start with these three lines. Even if I get confused as to what I'm coding, you can always start with the three lines, and it'll get you rolling. So you get the first step out of the way. Clear all, close all, and CLC clears all the variables in the command window, closes all the figures, and clears the command window. This, you want to do this basically so you're not uh, using variables that you haven't specified in the M script that you're working with at this point. And so basic programming, you have conditional statements, otherwise known as if statements, loops, and most of those are while and for. So conditional statements are basically, if A is less than B, then do something. Else, if A is less than C, do something different. Else, do this the rest of the time. Does that make sense? Get some nods. Katie Hall paying attention. Yeah. All right, good. While loops, uh, while A is less than B, do something, and then end. Basically, it'll continue as long as A is less than B. And you want to make sure you include a break statement in there so that it doesn't become an infinite loop. So if you do you know, 5,000 iterations of changing A and it doesn't ever get less than B, then you, you'll kick yourself out of the code because something's wrong. And that uses the break command, which I will show you in some of the M files that I'm going to go through. These are the basic uh, greater than, less than, less than or equal to, and greater than or equal to. That's how that is syntaxed. 
just wanted to put that in there. For loops go for, for example, from A equal to 1 through 10, uh, separating by 1. Do something and then end. And then I talked about this earlier. Uh, C is the start number, D is the spacing between values, and E is the final number. So you can go as you please with that particular type of command. If you want to plot something in MATLAB, you can type figure and then plot the variable x and y. And making the, the figures pretty is also important for uh, when you want to give a plot to your boss or your, your work or your class. And so the title is, syntax is this, title is a single quote, the text you want to use, and then in quote, whenever you put in something in quotes like this in MATLAB, it makes it a string. A what? String. A string. Excellent man. I always forget words. I don't say a lot of ums, but I'll stop and pause and not say anything. So we all have our little public speaking faux pas. X label, pretty straightforward. The axis. You do a, I call it a curvy quote and a square quote and the two x components and the two y components. You know what a string was. You have to answer some of my questions. <coughs> That's right. All right. Uh, plot and continue. Hold on and hold off. If you type the hold on command and you do multiple plots, it'll put them all in the same figure. This is really handy when you want to compare variables <coughs> and whatnot. Pause holds a script until the space bar is pressed. I'll use that for demonstration purposes. The only time I've really ever used it in real coding is with uh, the research I'm doing now. I'm looking at a lot of cross-correlation uh, plots, and I, I want to do a bunch of them and look at them all at the same time without having to press any buttons. So I just have a pause, and then like eight, eight tenths of a second, and I can look and see that, that that one's not good, this one's not good, that one's good, this one's not good, and they all just go and then I can find the ones I want to use. So comment and introduction this is also very important when you do scripts for, for commercial work or any time you want to <coughs> reuse a script. So I like to, to use this format. Uh, I got this from Rodney Bryant. He told me to do it this way at NIST. So you basically use the name of the script and then a description of what it is. Any general notes about a script that you're going to use, anything that's important. The inputs and what they are uh, with the units, if they have units. The out, what the outputs are going to be, what they should be, so you know if it's not working correctly. And then an example of inputs that you can use to make the code run correctly. Who wrote it, when you wrote it originally, and the last time you, you wrote it. Those are all important information you want to know about programs that are written. I'm going to talk a little bit about automated M file generation that MATLAB can do. You can, if you edit a plot using the plot editor, you can make MATLAB generate a script that will, that will make the plot that you edited, and then you can figure out what commands to put in your M file so you don't have to change your plots every time by hand because that's a pain. I don't like to do anything by hand because I'm lazy and make a lot of mistakes. Then you can also import data automatically it'll generate an M file for you to do that. So if you want to mess with FDS CSV files because they're huge and I don't particularly want to mess with them in Excel, I will go through a script to show you how to do that, assuming I don't run out of time. Inline functions, this is what I like to use when doing something <coughs> like running uh, run Jakarta fourth order. When you use the same equation several times, it's easier to make it into an inline function. You can change one line once, and that equation is changed everywhere in the script. So the syntax for that is you write inline, the equation, and then a comma, and then the variables, in all in single quotes, separated by commas. And then to evaluate the equation, uh, you basically do value is equal to f eval the function name you gave and the variable, and these would be quantities that you would change somewhere, and you can do it multiple times. 